I'd like to open this village board meeting. This is number 3086. It's November 24th, 2014. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Meyer. Here. Abernathy. Present. Semple. Here. Cross. Here. Kim. Here. Sullivan. Here. Great. Uh, would everyone please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance. Before we get going, um, before we get to the approval of minutes and on our normal business, I'd like to just take a few moments, if you'll uh, uh, forward me just a few moments to make some comments on the holiday season. It's, it's holiday season. You can see uh, we're celebrating just a little bit. Thanksgiving's coming up on Thursday. Um, Hanukkah starts Tuesday on the 16th of December, and Christmas is, of course, Thursday on the 25th this year. Um, I tell you, I'm getting ready for the holidays. Uh, at some point, I think we're going to have so many people in my house. We're getting the house ready. I'm going to have to. Uh, um, I'm afraid to count the number of people I'm going to have because I know we have village ordinances that have an occupancy related to them. We'll have to back off those just a little bit for a night or two, at least for me. But um, on Thanksgiving, you know, every president, starting from Washington to Lincoln to Obama, uh, you know proclaims a day of thanksgiving and then encourages all the citizens, all the residents to give thanks for those blessings we have and give thanks specifically to give thanks to God. And it's always a good exercise for all of us to do that occasionally, if not at least once a year, certainly more often, but it's always a good reminder. And for myself, um, I just want to express what I'm thankful for and uh, in thinking this through, I'm thankful that I live in a community uh, which has so many caring people. You know, it's no, it's no uh, um, secret that uh, Mundelein is not the wealthiest community in Lake County in terms of the money, median income, and, and, and material wealth. But I'll tell you what, we are extremely rich. We are a wealthy community in terms of caring people. Um, the more and more I get uh, to know more of the churches in town, the Boy Scout troops, the sports community, the volunteerism we have here is just amazing. Just amazing and so for, I and I'm thankful for that some communities you put the word out for volunteers and you get crickets you know but not here it's just amazing whenever wherever you look people come out and they care for others in so many parts of our community I'm thankful for the trustees yes I'm thankful for you guys and and, and, and the reason is this as much as you know to the naked eye you think that gosh they must really not like each other sometimes and you know Here's the thing, is, is we have a great, healthy relationship because I think, and I'm thankful for this part, and that is, is because at, at, at the end of the day, the motives behind the trustees and myself is always what is best for the village. What's best for the village? And uh, I'm thankful for that, uh, that we have vigorous debate, and it gets spirited sometimes. Maybe, it'll, maybe we'll see some tonight. Who knows? Um, uh, you don't know what you're going to get some nights, but you know what? At the end of the day, uh, uh, that's what I'm thankful for is the, is the pure motives that we all have here. Finally, the staff. I'm thankful we have such a professional staff. Uh, this has been a big year. Lots of challenges, uh, new hall, lots of plates spinning at the same time in so many departments and to, for each department uh, to be healthy and, and so in seeking such good excellence in a professional way, you know, not all communities have that. They might have a department here or two under investigation and in shambles. We don't have that here, and I'm thankful for that. You know, we, we're all thankful for our good health and our family. And when I look at our village, I see health and I see a, a, a nice family environment here. So I just want to uh, encourage everyone. Uh, you know, to give thanks yourself, and I think I speak for all the trustees and the staff and myself, wishing everyone in Mundelein a very, very happy Thanksgiving this season. With that, let's go to the approval of minutes. First up, the Committee of the Whole meeting, November 10th. I need a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. Motion by Abernathy, second by Kim. Discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Abernathy? Yes. Kim? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Semple. Yes. Boss. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Motion carries. Next up, uh, the regular meeting minutes from November 10th, 
2014. So moved. With a, I have a correction. Okay. Second. Okay. The correction. Correction. The correction is under my report. Um, it is regarding public land donation agreement. At the bottom of the comments, it said that. Trustee Voss further stated that her no vote depicts her displeasure with the term limits, but not the project in general. I don't actually believe I said that. Um, I was not happy with the change in terms, but um, I'm also not happy with the um, with the economic incentive that was offered to them. So I would prefer that it just say that my no vote depicts my pleasure with the new terms. Because I don't think I said that I wasn't, that I was pleased with the project. What page is that It is, um, This is page 4B. Thank you. Packet page, I think it's, um, hold on, I'll tell you in a second. Packet page 14, here, right there. Okay. It should just end with my no vote just picks my displeasure with the new terms and not, and nothing after but. Thank you. No but. No but. And then with that correction, I'm good. Okay. Any more discussion on that? All right, clerk, please call the roll. Voss. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kim. Yes. Semple. Yes. Motion carries. This takes us to the part of the evening where we have public commentary. Would anyone in the audience here live wish to uh, address the board at this time? We'll close the floor then and move on to presentations and awards. There are none. Public hearings, uh, there are none listed. Um, under the mayor's report, we have a meeting call for January 12, 2015. January 12, 2015, this will be a TIF review board meeting at 6.30 p.m. Uh, that evening, 30 minutes before the regular village board meeting. And that's it with my report. Let's move on to trustee reports. We go to Public Works Committee, Trustee Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, tonight, <clears throat> excuse me. Tonight, um, we want to talk about a re resolution waiving the formal bidding process, accepting proposals, and approving purchase orders for the purchase of a 2015 Ford Transit van from um, Napleton Ford of Libertyville, Illinois. And so I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution um, saying all that, <laughs> instead of repeating all that. All right, motion by Meyer. Second. Second by simple discussion. Yes, I have a question. All right, Trustee Ross. Um, so in the packet, it said that this was not available through the, um, st with the state purchased um contract but do we know what if this is if this cost is similar to what the state cost would have been i don't know the exact answer to that but i would say it's probably very competitive with it um, i know that we went out and got three uh proposals uh for the vehicle <clears throat> and uh so it was the best price we were able to get but the car just or the van <clears throat> just simply isn't available on the state purchase. Did it used to be? Have we not got them um, purchased before? Uh, I don't know specifically, other than I would say that, um, you know, the, the needs of the uh, water department now are maybe a little bit different than they have been. I know that they're changing out their vehicles to these uh, vans that have a little bit more utility to them instead of the trucks. They used to use trucks. And so um, we purchased, I think, our first one last year, uh, a year or two ago, 
on that. So. And was that purchased with the state bid? I just don't recall. Don't recall. Okay. Thank Is you. It? Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Meyer. Yes. Semple. Yes. Uh, Abernethy. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kim. Yes. Boss. Yes. Motion carries. All right, and I don't have anything else tonight. And that would be it for my report. Thank you. Uh, Finance Committee next. Trustee Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This evening we have a number of motions. Uh, the first is a motion to reimburse Trustee Meyer the amount of $109.20 for her expenses related to the in Illinois Municipal League conferences last September. And I'll make that motion. Second. Motion by Sullivan. Second by Semple. Discussion? Please call the roll. Sullivan. Yes. Semple. Yes. Meyer. Abstain. Abernathy. Yes. Foss. Yes. Kim. Yes. Motion carries. Second motion is in regard to the fire pension compliance report that uh, is before you. And uh, that is, the motion is to accept the fiscal year 2014 firefighters pension fund compliance report. And I will make that motion. Second. Motion by Sullivan, second by Semple. Discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Sullivan? Yes. Semple? Yes. Abernathy? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Voss? Yes. Kim? Yes. Motion carries. We also have a motion uh, in regard to the police pension compliance report. That motion is to accept the fiscal year ending 2014 police pension fund compliance report, and I so move. Motion by Sullivan. Second. Second by Semple. Discussion? Everyone's afraid to hit the button and talk because we're getting the revives. So we're a little sober on that. Okay. Any discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Sullivan. Yes. Semple. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Kim. Yes. Boss. Yes. Motion carries. The next motion is another. Uh, Length, lengthy uh, background uh, to study. I'm sure everybody's got it well in hand. And that's, that's our comprehensive annual financial report. And uh, we uh, have to move to accept the village's 2014 comprehensive annual financial report and the management letters there too. And I will make that motion. Second. Motion by Sullivan, second by Abernathy. Discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Sullivan? Yes. Abernathy? Yes. Semple? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Foss? Yes. Kim? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, final motion is one to pay a number of bills to AT&T. Uh, you'll recall we were concerned about the, the large amount of the last bill and, and uh, Administrator uh, Lobato explained that they vary considerably, and of course this one is on uh, the very low end of bills from AT&T. It is an amount of $2,933.81, and I'll move to pay those bills in that amount. Second. Motion by Sullivan, second by Voss. Discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Trustee Kim. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, last time we had mentioned that it was a high amount and it was explained that it was be due to the timing of our meetings and when the bills come in. I was just uh, curious if there are any like late fees that are also tied or accrued due to the fact of the timing or no? No, there are no late fees. Okay, thank you. Mics are hot. <laughs> we don't pay them any, we don't pay late fees. <laughs> Maybe Okay. Come second. Uh, anyone else? Clerk, please call the roll. Sullivan. Yes. Boss. Yes. Kim. Yes. Semple. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Meyer. Abstain. Motion carries. Uh, this evening on our omnibus list of motions, we have a motion to pay a bill list, a number of uh, pages of 
of bills to pay. Uh, the total of these is $1,113,376.48. Some of the major items on that, uh, first is a, uh, an amount to amalgamated bank in order to pay down principal and interest on some bonds. This amounts to $239,112.50. We're going to pay $48,912 to Gewalt Hamilton. Three invoices uh, regarding uh, streets, uh, engineering in regard to streets. We're going to pay $99,189 to Lakeside uh, Equipment for screens, and I'm suspecting, I'm, I'm fairly certain that these are screens at the wastewater treatment plant. We are going to pay 106000 some to Medline, this in regard to our sales tax uh, sharing agreement with Medline. We are going to pay $181,910 to Pirtano Construction for the uh, replacement of Route 60 water mains. And finally, uh, we're going to pay $46,082.04 to uh, SB Mundelein LLC in regard to our soon-to-be-completed economic incentive agreement for the Mundelein Crossings Shopping Center. Unless anyone has a question or a comment in regard to finance, that completes my report. Very good. Okay, moving on. Next up, Public Safety Committee, Trustee Semple. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before the Village Board meeting, we had a Public Safety Committee meeting, and during that committee meeting, we kind of had to cut it off a little bit short. Uh, we had talked about reconvening during the uh, Village Board meeting to get a consensus on moving forward with the canine unit. Uh, we had the Giannomores here who were the catalyst for this whole discussion and come to find out as they were exiting, uh, they said they actually had their checkbook here and were hoping to peel off a check uh, for the village for a canine. And I told them, well, hopefully we'll be contacting them in the near future. So, uh, Mr. Lebedo or, or Chief, are you looking for, do we have to have a vote or just a consensus here? Because the, the big issue, of course, is the commitment to hire an additional officer, and this is a special officer uh, that would be a new hire effective the next fiscal year, uh, but the reason being we would want to make this hopeful commitment now is to basically uh, get the dog ordered, get the dog in process, and then uh, you bring the trainer on uh, in six months down the road and they start working with the dog and we would have a canine unit in about a year from now or so, more or less, a little sooner. So what, it, what would you like, uh, or can, we, can the mayor try to get a consensus here? What do we want to do? Yeah, I, I think so. I think we're looking for consensus uh, uh, moving forward. This came up, uh, I think, at the last uh, budget cycle. Uh, there was some discussion about it and because it's such a long lead time uh, to do this we just kind of <clears throat> will plan for it uh, as we build the budget unless uh, the board thinks otherwise but um, if we do that uh, you have to understand that there is that commitment because we're going to start investing uh, in the purchase of the dog um, <clears throat> I need to have police chief be able to speak confidently with people that might be wanting to donate funds for the dog uh, and once that process starts uh, it's hard to back up on mm -hmm. so okay <clears throat> well let, let's go around the board and just uh, get everyone's thoughts and see what the consensus is uh, we can start I'll start off okay. mr. mayor I'm absolutely in support of this uh, I think the uh, chief has made his case and I think it would be good for the community to have a canine unit and uh, you know the unfortunate thing with any dog is they never seem to live long enough uh, so hopefully we can get a good eight to ten seven to ten years or so commitment out of the dog and the officer and uh, be a good thing for Mundelein thank you okay. Trustee um, before I I just do have one more question 
um, you had said we've had to borrow a dog from other depart other towns close by, correct? Yeah, you, hopefully ho close by when they are close by, yeah. Okay. Is there a cost involved to us when we have to borrow that? No, it's not. It's a... Uh, um, it's a reciprocal type a reciprocal. Uh, agreement with uh, with other agencies, and I would say on average we request a dog for various things between 12 to 20 <laughs> times per year. Uh, okay. Better than one once per month. Oh, okay. Well, that was my question, and since my biggest question is, is there a need for it? And he just, uh, Chief Gunther just answered that question, 12 to 20 times. So yes, I would be for this. Okay. Yeah, I support the concept. Okay. Over here. Trustee Voss. I'm all in. Okay. Can't wait. Trustee Kim. I have some more questions. Okay. Thank you. I want to make sure I, you know, thoroughly picked all the brain folds, but. Uh, Okay, in, in the cost that you had given us, um, there was the 7,500 and the 5,000 and the 93,000. Is the cost for adjusting the um, police cars also included in these figures? It is, yes. Okay, which, which one of them? The, the initial 20,000, is that where it would be? Yeah, correct. Uh, it's about $20,895, and that includes outfitting the car, understanding that the vehicle itself would be taken from the existing fleet. I'm not going to buy a new car, uh, but the equipment for the car would all be purchased and placed into an existing vehicle that we have in the fleet. Um, so in addition to the hire of one officer to replace, you know, the one who is then handling the dog, is, is there any other plan to hire more officers in the next fisc fiscal year? No, this would be my only request for personnel in the coming fiscal year, provided that things continue to go in the direction that they're going and nothing changes. Um. Okay. Concise answers. Good. Um, I noticed that some of the uh, funding for the dog would come out of like seizure or forfeiture of assets. Um, with, with the way things are a little bit changing in those regulations, do you see it being sustainable to be able to pay for the dog in the coming future? I do. I, I've been watching what's taking place, uh, you know, nationally, um, and uh, it, it, it is sustainable. Um, we have the funds now to sustain it for several years moving out, even if they were to cut the program tomorrow. Uh, I don't see that happening. Um, you know, you have to understand that any of these seizures that we might claim have to go through the legal process and a judge has to award that to us after hearing the case and determining probable cause and, and seeing the weight of the case before he even you know, awards it to us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's awarded back to the individual. So there's a process for that, and I don't see those particular seizures going away anytime soon. Okay. Um, also, then, um, in the case of like legalization of cannabis, I'm just wondering, are they able to train the dog to then ignore it? No. Um, that was I, for eventually, can medical cannabis, which is different because you still couldn't have it recreationally. But I'm just. Eventually, they if it becomes uh, legal, it probably would drop from the training uh, cadre. However, if you had a dog that was already trained on that particular scent. Um, then he's trained on that particular scent, which is why I was very glad that, and I didn't ask them ahead of time, they chose to show uh, pseudo-cocaine uh, and heroin, which is a huge problem for us. Right. Uh, these animals can detect all of those things too. Uh, so, um, you know, the focus would probably be on those and, and we'll, we'll see what happens and, you know, as society moves forward. Okay, thank you. That's all the questions I had and I would be in favor. Okay. Mr. Yes, I'm, I'm uh, I'm very much in favor of this. We've, we've talked about this many times over the years, long before I was on the board. Uh, I can remember when, as Trustee uh, Semple mentioned, Mundline PD did have a canine unit. His name was Judge, and uh, I don't think he was the dog that you saw here today, but he was, he was effective. 
Um, the one couple questions. Will we consider when we hire a replacement for the canine officer that we're just one short of our sworn strength? Or will we, will we add and, and consider ourselves to be too short, two officers below full strength? Um, if I understand correctly, if we hire this officer, the, we would then be one short okay. of our authorized strength. Okay. All right. Yes. And uh, I know you realize how important it is to make a good selection of who the canine handler will be. Yes. Um, that that person needs to be completely committed to his dog. Yeah, and I'm actually glad that you brought that up because I think that's one thing we kind of skipped in the, uh, uh, in the presentation is mm -hmm. you're absolutely correct. It's paramount that that individual is, has the level of commitment required for, for this commitment. This is a 10-year commitment that you have to understand is part of his life her, or her life every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, and the process that goes through is if the dog is selected and purchased from TOPS, they assist you with the selection of the actual officer itself. So much so that they go to the home of the prospective officers, do a home visit, determine whether it's a good environment, talk with neighbors, and, and try to anticipate any of those issues that may be coming up. It's very in depth with uh, how they how they go through this. And um, although I will say it's very rare, uh, you know there are things and times where the you know you make a bad selection and you have to stop and re and go back and move forward. Uh, and that's happened once or twice in the county that I'm aware of, and in both situations, the recommendation to terminate that particular uh, handler was made by TOPS, and they then funded the purchase of a new dog for a new handler to continue that program, because they feel that, that strongly about it also. Very good. Now this, this will be an extremely effective law enforcement tool, and uh, I think it's overdue. I'm happy to support it. Thank you. Well, I certainly support it. Um, just for the benefit of those that are watching, uh, we had the presentation before him. Oh, I know. There we go. Um, I certainly support this. Uh, for the benefit of those watching on the recording, um, we, uh, the meeting beforehand, we, lots of benefits were really brought out. And just uh, uh, the, the most compelling to me, it seemed, was the the additional safety that it would bring not only to officers but to suspects because of the mere presence of the dog, a suspect who would otherwise be aggressive, the presence of a dog has a way of changing things, uh, the attitudes, and so instead of uh, a suspect maybe doing something and getting hurt, hurting an officer, the dog changes the attitude and so we see a much higher level of safety by having the presence of the dog there. That's, that's a compelling thing to me. Um, uh, reason one of the reasons to have a dog but the benefits were just numerous there's a cost we've talked about that and I'm definitely in favor of this so it looks like we have a consensus here so good so chief what are next steps well um, I spoke with uh, tops and in anticipation that this would come this way by the way I thank you very much uh, and they uh, are said they don't, you know, they can proceed forward without, you know, even a check at this point, knowing that there's a commitment from the city to move forward with it. They'll begin to look uh, for the right fit uh, of animal. We'll meet and talk about what that, that fit is, what we are looking to stress through the program. Um, you know, I had, I had originally asked to not stress the aggression or the protection part of it because that, you know, while that needs to be there, I don't know that that's the focus that we're after. We're after the focus of you know the narcotic detection and the lost and missing. Uh, and they break their program at such that those training blocks are uh, devoted in four hour blocks. So we can you know focus on those particular areas that we want to focus on. Uh, so we'll sit down, we'll talk about what that is that we're looking for from the program and begin the animal selection process and, and getting him or her, I think it's always him, shipped over to uh, uh, to us and, uh, and start looking in probably about 60 to 90 days we'll start to look at for the selection of the the handler itself and make that announcement I would hope you know the end of February March April area um, can I ask one more question sorry we've talked a lot about temperament and work um, as trustee Sullivan knows uh, shepherds are frequently have trouble with hip dysplasia so I assume that these dogs come certified 
Yes, and with a two-year guarantee. It's 18 months or two-year guarantee on their, on their hips. Uh, so if there's a problem, you, you get a new one. Okay. New hip or new dog? New dog. You can't Sorry. get a new hip. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Chief. And it did lead to one last question I had. When we initially had these discussions, uh, we had talked about a vehicle. Uh, and I just assumed, of course, that we would have an SUV that we would utilize as a canine unit. But I guess that's not necessarily the case, correct? No. Um, they do utilize SUVs, and it may end up being that way. However, uh, something I didn't think about was that leaping back and forth to a higher level. Uh, sometimes the sedan is uh, a better for the animal. So. Um, these new SUVs are a lot different than the old traditional SUVs, and they are much lower, but um, we'll talk through that with, with them and see what they recommend. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, let's get back uh, to our Public Safety Committee agenda here. Uh, first up is a records management system purchase, and I'll make the motion, and then we'll have the uh, Chief walk us through. I'll make a motion to adopt a resolution waiving the bidding process for records management software services, approve the purchase order in the amount of $61,000, the immediate payment of $45,000, and authorize Chief Gunther to sign the agreement. Second. Motion by Semple, second by Abernathy. Chief, Chief can you uh, walk us through real quick what we're doing here? Yes, if you remember back in uh, July, August, I came to you with a CAD to purchase the CAD. Uh, you approved that, and that was the first phase. I said I'd be coming back to you with the second phase of it. This is the second phase of it. Um, and to kind of just give you a, a little bit of a snapshot fiscally, what we're talking about here, uh, currently uh, our CAD and record management system, which is what I'm asking for today, uh, is, a, is about $65,000 per year in maintenance costs. Um, by purchasing this records management system, combined with the CAD, there will only be a $30,000 per year maintenance cost. We'll be saving double uh, our, our costs towards maintenance. And uh, um, this system comes with the components uh, to add on the electronic citation and electronic crash reporting modules, uh, which will, again, improve our efficiency and hopefully minimize our um, personnel needs on those kinds of documents and records. Thank you, Chief. Okay, anyone else? Clerk, I, we, oh, I'm sorry? Ooh, okay. Um, I quickly, did you, um, are there, I assume, so that there were two real systems that we had bid on. I assume that you've checked them out, that there are other places in Illinois that use them and they have a good record? Yes. Not only we did we do one uh, um, go around and we ourselves looked at uh, four different companies um, by ourselves, but we also then uh, found that there was a consortium that was looking at the same purchase that included uh, eight or nine different agencies, including, you should have these documents. Yeah, yeah I do. Right. I, I'm the, so that was my next question is, so it's cheaper for us to purchase this solo <laughs> yeah. than yes. as this consortium. Yes, it is, because the consortium um, needed to come up with an equation that was fair for all, and therefore they based it on population. Uh, we are the largest municipality population-wise, therefore we uh, are shared in the largest portion of the cost. Um, and so Capers, who we'd looked at originally by ourselves, had given us the individual quote prior and honored that outside the, uh, the consortium. Um, so that's why we're electing to go with them. And they are an Illinois-based company, and they do have multiple clients within Illinois. Okay, thank you. If I could just add one thing to that, it's uh, <clears throat> when we looked at this with the consortium, uh, the Capers product that we're looking at, <clears throat> the cost differential saves us about $250,000 over the 10-year life uh, expectancy of this type of hardware or software, <clears throat> and so it's a far better deal uh, for us and why we chose not to stick with the consortium, too. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I wanted to, to point out that even though you didn't send it out to bid, you guys did a whole bunch of research, so you kind of went above and beyond on this, and you saved a ton of money, so that's great. Um, 
what I wanted to ask was, uh, based on what I read here, it really is a repository for incident reports. Uh, so there is no um, records management of like the license plate scan data. This is only for incidents, it looks like. Is that correct? That is largely correct. Um, this is any service call that we go on uh, generates a paper trail, if you will. It doesn't necessarily mean there's an extensive report, but we are required to document everything we do to the tune of 20,000 plus per year. That's what this system will be tracking and documenting for us. It also creates reports that we're required to provide to the state on various things, crime reports and to the FBI and to the state and et cetera. So uh, all of that becomes now electronically and saves the time uh, personnel-wise to not have to, you know, manually enter these things, review them, and this now becomes an electronic process and speeds it up and creates those reports for us. So these are only for the incidents where, where you're called and then you have to respond? Uh, yeah, but it also, it also uh, tracks our traffic stop. Uh, any traffic stop that's done, is a call is generated, so it tracks all that stuff. Okay. Um, but a traffic stop <coughs> is different than driving by and getting a, re a registry and database of Correct. The that's, a, that's maintained in a separate database. Okay, so this is unrelated to that. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Clerk, please call the roll. Semple. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kim. Yes. Boss. Yes. Motion oh, carries. The next item on the agenda is a little bit vague, but if you recall, I believe it was about a year ago, or as we were going in the budget process, we had talked about doing some remodeling at the police department to basically make it safer for the police staff who is down there uh, to make it um, just a safer environment. We had an incident in Vernon Hills where a uh, Mundelein resident went to the police station didn't know where the Mundelein police station was, so they went to the Vernon Hills police station instead and uh, pulled out a gun. So, uh, you know, based upon that, the chief felt it would be good to uh, tighten up ours a little bit and make it a little bit safer for our employees. So with that, I'm going to make a motion to authorize staff to solicit proposals for the renovation of that records area at the police department. Did I say all that correctly, chief? You did. Second. Right. Motion by Simple, second by Abernathy. Discussion? Yes. Trustee Voss? Um, I think that this is a great idea, but I'm just wondering if we've given any thought to doing that at that window there, where um, as we've had some um, tours that have been conducted and other people have said, you know, people who sit there on the front line and they're exposed and if someone's angry that there's nothing that stops them. And um, you know, in talking to the staff that sit there, they are fairly cognizant that they're at risk every day. And I'm wondering if, if perhaps as part of safe security improvements that we're doing at the police station, we ought to look at doing them here. Well, we have taken a look at that. You know, we, uh, first of all, they like us far better here than at the police department. So, <laughs> oh, I go on. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, but we do fun. have, um, we given that a lot of thought. And, and this uh, design of this counter here, uh, there was a lot of thought put into it. And with input from the police department, and quite coincidentally, um, this just came up recently, and I think there's some training Part of what goes on is how to handle somebody that is uh, maybe getting a little aggressive. And I know that there's uh, police departments coming over and it's going to train, um, and which they do periodically, and it's been a while, uh, but to review some security procedures in the new building, uh, number one. Uh, but uh, also, that counter is designed in such a way, <clears throat> certainly it's open, and we're walking a fine line between um, uh, be, being completely closed off and being a little bit more welcoming without being, you know, behind the bulletproof glass. And uh, so <clears throat> we balanced both safety and aesthetics uh, in the environment that we're in. And the counter height is a height, that height for a certain reason. And the depth, uh, the distance that the employee is from the customer is a certain distance for a reason. And those types of things uh, go into um, <clears throat> uh, uh, 
putting employees a little bit more at ease. Uh, we also have security measures there. There's a panic button uh, at both stations, so um, <clears throat> police department's a block away, so um, hopefully uh, when that happens, and it happens from uh, periodically, uh, but not very frequently. Um, and <clears throat> based on our history of what we've done, we've simply not had a problem, so. Um, Except, and I appreciate that, but we don't have a problem till we have a problem, and then it's yeah, too late. And if, right. if, you know, I guess as a, as a trustee, I would like to know what the cost would be, what it would take to do that, and how it would look if we're having someone come in to give us information on that at the police department, then you'd hate to have had the opportunity to do something and not do something and have an incident come up that we could have prevented mm -hmm. and didn't simply because we had never had it come up. I just, I guess if we're hiring somebody, how much more could it cost to have them just look at that and say, this is what it would take? Well, frankly, I don't care if it costs 50 cents. I wouldn't want a bulletproof glass over there. I don't care what the, you know, that's just. So maybe there's no. something else. Or maybe they would say, as Mr. Lebedo said, well, if you don't want bulletproof glass, you've done everything else that you can do. Maybe they would say that. It would be, maybe they would say something else. Maybe it doesn't have to be bulletproof glass. Maybe we should add a, a, a I don't know, backsplash, if you will, that goes up. I don't know, because that's not my field of expertise. I'm just thinking if we're concerned about mm -hmm. safety at the police station, these guys handle money. Mm -hmm. They handle irate people as well. Perhaps we ought to look into their safety. Well, yeah, I, I mean, that's a point well taken. I mean, it, it you can... Mm -hmm. I mean, you can um, <clears throat> probably go over the top with this kind of stuff because there's never, um, you know, hindsight's always 20, 20 uh, so you hope nothing happens. But uh, uh, looking back on it, there's always things that you can do, but you try and balance that with cost and, and uh, what you're up to. But uh, there's also been uh, reported in the national news number of incidents involving uh, village boardrooms and shootings inside boardrooms. And so uh, there's nothing here either. And um, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it, you could look at this and, and look at others, you know, I don't know. So <clears throat> maybe that's what they would recommend is that there's a, um, a what do you call those? You know, a gun detector, what you, a metal detector oh, thing. Right. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just wonder mm -hmm. if now that we're doing it for the police station and we're already hiring somebody, if we should look into it here. D don't we already have a sticker that says to leave your gun? Yeah, I think if somebody's really angry and going to come in and that's not going to deter them. <laughs> that, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really at the pleasure of the board. I mean, it's, well, you can... I know how much thought went into all of that, Mr. Lebedo, and I know uh, uh, a tremendous amount of effort. He alluded to just scratch the surface of the hours that went into the design of everything going on back there. Um, you can go overboard real easily. I don't think we're a community that needs to go there, but I'll open it up to the board if you guys want to. Are these folks that are consultants that would come in and give it a gander, or? What, uh... First of all, I must say I'm offended that you have you don't think you have any security during the board meetings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, what this is is this is a very specific request uh, to go to bid. The bid has been drafted with the assistance of the Public Works uh, Division specifically to come in and look at what we want done uh, to our facility. Uh, so that's all I'm asking for today is to put this to bid uh, and see who comes forth with uh, uh, with pricing and what that looks like. Uh, and then you know we can kind of then I'll come back to you after that with what those costs are. But we've drawn a specific bid up for this particular, and we're in a much different situation than uh, than would be here. We already have a large majority of the construction and the work for this done. It was done 
at the building when the building was built uh, to include, uh, you know, bulletproof um, drywall and in the areas that are already existing there. This is an addition and add on, so the cost would be is going to be much less than what it would be to to, to do that here. Okay, so these folks wouldn't be able to come here and do a, a, a security review. No, I, I didn't. They, they could, but I think the, the appropriate process would be to let us do this bid. Once we've decided on uh, uh, fairly on a contract, we might get their point of view on, on this, if that's what the board is looking for, as to what that might entail. And then you can discuss it further. Okay. Okay, so we'll wait. No. Clerk, please call the roll. Semple. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Voss. Yes. Kim. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Motion carries. Final motion on the Public Safety Committee section is a resolution waiving the formal bidding process for the purchase of a Ford Explorer. This one goes for the fire department. So with that, I'll make a motion to adopt a resolution waiving the formal bidding procedures and authorizing the purchase of a 2015 Ford Explorer four-wheel drive SUV as listed on the Suburban Purchasing Cooperative SPC from Braidman Ford, 2038 West Waukegan Road in Glenview, Illinois, in the amount of $26,813. Motion by Simple. Second. Second by Abernathy. Discussion? Chief, what are we doing here? Uh, this is just a routine replacement of a staff vehicle that was uh, provided in the CIP budget request for fiscal year 15 and just about that simple. And the vehicle is similar to the other? Uh... It'll be identical to the ones that we have right now. And of course, the four wheel drive has been a very nice added asset to our fleet. Terrific, Chief. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Yes, Trustee Sullivan. Is this, is this your vehicle? Who's use what do we use this vehicle for now? It will it will become my vehicle and then we step down vehicles from there. Okay, that, so we're replacing your vehicle. When no. we purchased your vehicle, we purchased two identical correct. vehicles. The deputy is chief correct. is driving one. Right. Why don't we have to replace the deputy chief's vehicle? along with your vehicle because this was planned for the 2004 Chevy that's What's in the, the bureau. What are the mileage numbers on your vehicle? Uh, I'd have to look and see I think probably about 40,000 miles so it's not it, it, in in replacing it it is stepping it down for continued useful life so we had the two SUVs at the same time and now we're just replacing the 2004 Chevy that's got about I'm gonna look at deputy chief lag 115,000 miles on it right now so we move these vehicles down through a strategic, you know, uh, through the operation into the Fire Prevention Bureau, and then they're taken offline from there. So we will finally right. delete the 2004 vehicle. So this 204 Chevrolet Impala will be removed. Correct. That will be removed from the fleet. So this is just a replacement. It's not any expansion or anything like that. One in, one out. Yep. And, the, and the 2008 Chevy Impala and the 2002 Crown Vic will be placed in service as fleet vehicles. Correct. Where is this SUV with 40,000 miles going? That will be part of, that will go to Deputy Chief Lighting and his car will go into the Fire Prevention Bureau. Okay. So we just step them down each time we, we purchase them that way. And we are eliminating one vehicle that? Yeah, it's a one for one. So we're. We're going to trade it in? No, I'm, I think Central Garage will probably take that to just the auction. Oh, okay. But it's, it's going out of the fleet. Yeah. In oh. fact, it's sitting in back with no license plates on it and removed now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just need to follow up on this. So we bought a vehicle for you and DC Lydic at the same time. Yes. Yours has 40,000 miles on it. How old is it? It's a 2011. 
And DC Lydic, how many miles is on yours? 50? Yeah. So, so we'll slow down the use of his by mine going to him, and then that goes into the Fire Prevention Bureau. We're trying to stagger date. We're tr normally, we would not have had the two SUVs at the same time. So we're trying to create a spread here so that these are not all coming up at the same time. So he has way more miles on his, so we're going to slow that down a little bit so we can keep it longer, and he will use my car then. I'm just trying to figure out why we're averaging so many miles per year. Oh, we're running all over the place. <laughs> I mean, we're, you know, we are, we're operating out of town as much as we are in town. And yeah, we average, we average, you know, a strong 15,000 miles a year. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, clerk, please call the roll. Semple. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kim. Yes. Boss. Yes. Motion carries. All right, Chief Gunther, anything for police? I know you've said a lot tonight. Anything else, announcements or anything? Yeah, I'm not going to stop just yet. Um, we have the, uh, tomorrow, we have the turkey giveaway. Um, so uh, we've got 40 families that will be getting uh, turkeys out to. I know uh, a couple of uh, the trustees are going to be over to help out. Um, and then we've got the spaghetti dinner right after the tree lighting, which is uh, December 5th, um, 5.30 to 8.30. So we'll be doing the spaghetti dinner over at the police department. Um, and then I would just say I hope by the next meeting I'll be able to bring um, one of the new squad cars with the new design. Uh, the graphic design uh, on it, which I hope you like. Uh, we worked a lot on that with uh, um, Don Jenich, and so we should have those at least one of those ready by the 8th. And we're currently uh, have a committee together looking at the replacement or uh, redesign of the patch on our uniforms um, to fall a little bit more in line with, uh, with our branding and um, kind of getting ourselves up to speed here. So soon enough, and that's all I've got. Thank you, Chief. Chief Sashko for fire. Certainly, thank you. On December 6th, we will have our Holiday Heroes Blood Drive at Station 1 on Midlothian Road. So that is from 9 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. We actually are going to have two separate raffles. There will be a dinner raffle for one of the restaurants in town, and then we also will have a um, Blackhawks piece yet to be named because we like to keep that a secret until you come and donate blood. Uh, so hopefully we'll see a lot of people out there. This is probably the most critical time of the year is the holidays with the drop off of blood donations. And as I've said in the past, there's a thousand units a day in the Chicago market that are necessary. So um, to everybody watching on TV, hopefully we'll have you out on Saturday, uh, December 6th. And then just an update for the board. Uh, we do have a, um, a sale on the ladder truck that we retired when we purchased the used uh, tower ladder. Uh, that actually is going to go to the Grays Lake Fire Protection District. Uh, will also be used at the College of Lake County for training. Um, so they'll get some useful life out of it, even though it won't be a frontline vehicle anymore. So I plan on bringing that contract sale uh, to the board on December 8th. It will be for the $65,000 that was the value that was put on by the brokers uh, that had looked at the vehicle. So we're, in essence, getting top dollar. That was the top dollar we thought we would get for that minus any brokerage fees. And they have agreed to the $65,000 price. Um, so we actually, so that it didn't get or deteriorate in the weather in action, we've actually moved it out to Grays Lake Station 3, so it's housed inside. Um, kind of like a car dealer says, why don't you take it home for a drive and see how it fits? And so it worked out really well. <laughs> so I'll bring that back on December 8th. Thank you, Chief. And December 5th, you are escorting Santa Claus, correct? Santa will be escorted uh, on December 5th. That is correct. And uh, Very good. Just wanted to make sure to he's counting on you. So. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all we've got. Okay. Thank you. Next up, Community and Economic Development Committee, Trustee Voss. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, tonight, the yeah. first item of business is a fence variance request it's 688 okay, Wortham Circle. Is the petitioner here? Okay. Um, so first thing is I'll make a motion to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission minutes and findings of fact. I'll motion. second by boss. I'll second that motion. Second by 
Sullivan discussion. Clerk, please call the roll. Foss. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kim. Yes. Semple. Yes. Abernethy. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next up, I'll make a motion to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendations. I'll motion second that Foss. also. Second by Sullivan. Discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Foss. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kim. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Semple. Yes. Motion carries. Um, so again, this is requesting a variance and this had to come before us because this is a corner lot and according to our um, new regulations, this corner lot fence doesn't fit what uh, the corner lot should be. I, I would like to um, commend both staff and the petitioner for giving us a very comprehensive packet, I think, to make our decision easier. So with that said, I'll make a motion to authorize staff to draft an ordinance granting certain variations regarding fence height and openness at 688 Wortham Circle. Second. Motion by Voss, second by Kim. Discussion? All right, clerk, please call the roll. Voss. Yes. Kim. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Simple. Yes. Motion carries. So for the petitioner, that will come back to us on December 8th. Okay, just so you were clear. Okay, next up is a resolution, um, a motion to adopt a resolution approving Village of Mundelein Sanitary Sewer Service to the property located at 28775 North Route 83 in unincorporated Lake County, Illinois. Uh, this is um, the Roadster Shop. Yes. And I'll make that motion. Motion by Voss. Second. Second, Second by Kim. Discussion. Um, just that I did talk to Neil Gerber today, and they uh, plan on um, being in this week to request um, this sanitary sewer hookup. Okay. Any other discussion? No. Clerk, please call the roll. Voss. Yes. Kim. Yes. Sullivan. No. Simple. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, and the last thing I have is a meeting call scheduled for, oh, no, that's a lie. I have two things. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. It's in here. Give me a second. Um, well, while we're doing that, I have a meeting call for um, December 8th at 7.15, I assume, because we can't do it beforehand. We're doing it during the meeting for a variation for signs for Dunkin' Donuts at 700 East Route 45. And I also, somewhere, if I could find my papers, but perhaps not, I am... Um, about the, oh, Victor, help me out. This is about the um, sign ordinance survey, and we've extended it until December uh, 1st? 8th? Yes, it's first? been extended to December 1st. The announcement is, to, if you haven't done so already, to please visit our website, look at the draft ordinance and provide your comments as we will be wrapping up the survey and we will be collecting all the comments and providing those comments uh, to the consultant to May to start working on the next draft. Staff did a great job of presenting the signed ordinance to the MBA and got a lot of really good feedback from them. So um, we still want more participation, but I think we're getting lots of good feedback. So thank you. That's all. Okay. Free register in order to get this like ten dollar discount, but you can get it up to three times at three different stores. So they basically give you like reimbursed money to go shop small. So that's really great. Um, so there's that. Uh, the public works facility signage is rolling out with the branding. Um, you're going to start seeing winter banners. So that's neat. And um, it says here Village Hall Christmas tree working with Don Abernathy. So why don't I let you talk about that? Because I don't know what that is. It's just um, something Don and I are working on getting a Christmas tree for the lobby 
and um, some decorations. That's pretty much it. Okay, thank you, uh, Trustee Evernathy. And then um, two of our local businesses were in the um, newspaper for their Toys for Tots generosity. We have Time Art and Tavern on 60. Um, they were both in the newspaper, so that's great. Um, I really want to uh, get positive um, reputation management and like feedback from people out there. So I'm really glad that this has been in the paper. There's been a lot of good things, including Jay Cutler coming today to Mondelein. So there's a lot of good stuff. Okay, now speaking of, ty ty of uh, uh, time art, no, the uh, Toys for Tots, we have one here in Village Hall. Okay. And so we're a collector as well. And that goes through December 15th. I think all the Toys for Tots drop-offs are through December 15th, if I'm not mistaken, right? Tavern on 60, it says uh, December 13th, if I'm not... I, December I don't 13th. know, it just says 12, 13 years, so okay. I think... So if you go to Tavern on 60, you can drop off toys there. You can drop them off here, and then... But you should not wrap them, isn't that correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, you should cannot not wrap, wrap them. them. <coughs> so I'm going to drop them off. Um, Trustee Kim, there was... I, I wanted to ask about the, um, the survey for the... Uh, Oh, yes, thank you. Yes. Yes, okay, so the survey was just launched last week for the um, utility box art. So it's a whole whopping five questions, so don't get a hand cramp. But you and your friends, if you appreciate or don't like the uh, utility box art, now's the time to go take that survey. And it can be found in the quick links of mundelein.org. So there's two surveys people can take. <laughs> the sign? The sign? The utility box. Right, and they're both on the website. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you. Next up, Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, Trustee Abernathy. Oh, there we go. This evening I have one motion for us. It's on the Hickory Wood subdivision, the public improvement accept acceptance. So a motion to adopt a resolution accepting certain public subdivision improvements in the Hickory Woods subdivision. Motion by Abernathy. Second. Second by Semple. Discussion. Please. Just Trustee Sullivan. <laughs> This is the other one. This is a different subdivision. Uh, this is to the west. West, correct. So it's entirely different. Totally different. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Clerk, please call the roll. Abernathy. Yes. Semple. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Voss. Yes. Kim. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Motion carries. Trustee Abernathy? I'm sorry, yes, I... I'm sorry. Um, yes, I'm finished for the evening. Finished? Thank you. Okay, thank yes. you. Okay, <laughs> finally, other reports. I... Um, does any other trustee wish to present any other reports before we go on, go on to the omnibus? Okay, very good, thank you. Going on to the omnibus, we have items one, two, three, four, and five. Does any trustee on the omnibus list wish to wish to pull any of those five items? Wow. Okay. All right. Very good. Then I need a motion to pass all five omnibus vote items. I'll so make a motion. Second. <laughs> motion by Voss. Second by Abernathy. Discussion. Clerk, please call the roll. Voss. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Semple. Yes. Kim. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Motion carries. That takes us to the village staff reports. Village administrator, Mr. Lebedo. I just have one item on the agenda tonight, and I'm looking for a motion to sell surplus property. Um, this is the trailer uh, behind the old village hall. I reported this to the board in my brief, I think, a few weeks ago. and. We have attempted to sell this. I think our starting price was, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Flynn, but I think it was $5,000. Uh, 
<clears throat> and uh, that seemed like a good price. But uh, really, when you think about the cost that we've gotten estimates, I think one to demolish the trailer was almost $9,000. No, it was nine. And it was nine. And to uh, remove the trailer is somewhere between six and $7,000. Uh, getting rid of the trailer is a good deal. Uh, so <clears throat> we're looking to uh, uh, ask the board, simply ask the board to pass uh, uh, a motion on the resolution, not a resolution, an ordinance, authorizing the sale of the surplus property uh, and essentially get rid of the trailer. <clears throat> and I think the uh, contractor that's purchasing it is going to pick it up the first week of December. So there's a lot of steps that have to happen in between. That's an oversized uh, load because uh, when you take the trailer apart, it's still 14 feet wide. So it's a wide load and they have to get all the necessary permits to move it out of there. So it'll probably be a big production to uh, move it off site. I'll make the motion and a second and a third, whatever it takes <laughs> to get that thing out of here. <laughs> second. We'll, we'll give the motion to simple second by Abernathy. Any more discussion? Okay, clerk, please call the roll. Semple. Yes. Abernathy. Yes. Meyer. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kim. Yes. Foss. Yes. Motion carries. I have no further report, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Thank you. Village attorney? I, I have no report, and I understand there's no need for an executive session. Oh, there's Very no good. need? Okay. No. Uh, village clerk? Clerk Timmerman is not here. Mr. Flynn, anything? No report. Very good. Uh, that takes us. There's no executive session. All right. No other business? Last chance? Okay. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Voss, second by Meyer. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Good night. <laughs>